Hi, my name is Jennifer Stover, and on behalf of Rolling Hills Library, I would like to welcome you to Crochet One on One for Teens. This is a two part series where our first class, we're going to learn our basic crochet stitches and resources. And we're also going to be learning uh, what we can do with our projects when complete. Our second class will be Crochet 201, where we're going to improve on those skills and learn how to make some additional items. So let's, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, these are the basic tools that you need to crochet. You're going to need a pair of sizzle, scissors. You're going to need a blunt tip darning needle. If you notice, it doesn't have a sharp point. That way it won't stab your yarn. You also need locking stitch markers. This is so you can clip onto your fabric. You also need a ruler. You can use a sewer's ruler or preferably a flat straight ruler when you're measuring your items. And then also the most important item that you're going to need is a crochet hook. Uh, to tell you a little bit about the crochet hook, they come in different sizes. Um, this particular one um, is, give focus, is a H or an eight hook. Crochet hooks in US go alphabetically starting with B all the way to, I believe, U, and they increase in size. The, mo the biggest size you'll normally see at any type of craft store uh, would be a Q size. And they also have a metric number on there. So an H or an eight hook is five millimeters. And that is the type of hook that we're going to be using today. Uh, we also have um, a few little descriptions about the crochet hook in general. As you can see, it has a hook and a point. This is called the point. This narrow part where it increases in size is called the throat the place where you're going to actually be using and placing your stitch or stitches will, is called the shaft. This is your holder. And then this is the handle or the grip. This is the grip where you usually hold that usually gives you the best balance. And then you have the handle. There's two different ways to hold a crochet hook. The most common ways are is what they call a pencil. So you're gonna hold it just like you would be writing with a pencil or a pen. The next way to hold and place is actually as an overhand grip. So you're gonna place over, and you, a lot of times you hold your hook upwards. Either way is perfectly fine. There's no right or want, wrong way, it's what's ever comfortable for you. I'm going to be holding it in an overhand group, grip because that's what's comfortable for me today. Let me go ahead and show you the uh, types of yarn that you'll receive or that you see um, in yarn stores. Uh, a lot of times when you look at a pattern, if it has a picture, a lot of times there is a pattern underneath the project. So if you're going to rip the ball band, uh, don't rip it just right in the middle. Try to rip it right at the seam. That way, if you like the pattern that they're showing, this one is showcasing Fingerless Smiths, and you want to make that um, you have that free pattern available for you. Um, a ball band will also tell you a lot of basic information about your yarn. It will tell you what the size weight of yarn is. Yarn comes in six different sizes or seven different sizes all the way from zero, which is a cobweb lace fingering yarn all the way to a size six, which is super bulky. They are starting create, to create a size seven, which is a mega bulky for a lot of those big arm blankets that you'll see, especially on Pinterest. The most common one that is used is a medium four, or it's also called a worsted weight yarn. This is a very versatile yarn size where you can do blankets, sweaters, accessories, scarves, um, socks, all kinds of different types of projects. So this is a good general multi-purpose yarn that you can use with different sizing. Also, it will tell you um, an ideal uh, ideal hook and needle to, to use. 
in the project. This is just a guideline, but it gives you what the manufacturer feels is the best result. Um, so for this particular yarn, it gives you both knitting needle size recommendations and hook size recommendations. Since we're crocheting today, I'm gonna to be focusing on the hook. So with this, they suggest using this yarn with an H or an eight hook. You would do, you would chain 13 single crochet stitches and you would single crochet 14 rows and that should give you a four inch by four inch square. If your size is too big, you would go up a needle size or up a hook size. If your project is too small, you would go down a hook size. That way you have more stitches in your sizing. Um, this would also give you the care measure, uh, the care ingredients. Um, for this particular yarn, it is acrylic, which it states, and acrylic is a type of extruded plastic, so it's uh, very versatile. Um, you can wash it, you can dry it, but you can't bleach it, or um, it doesn't suggest to dry clean, and it doesn't suggest to iron. So um, this is very friendly, especially if you're making um, baby clothes or other items that get a lot of wear and tear. Uh, it will also tell you the amount of yarn that you'll find in this, pro uh, in this skein of yarn. Um, so if you're working on a project that needs 400 yards, you would need to buy two of these particular skeins. If you are using more than one skein, it's very important to pay attention to what is called the dye lot. The dye lot is when there's a batch of yarn that's created at a certain at the same time. You want to match the numbers as closely as possible, um, or actually exactly. So then that way there's no color variation on your project. So when you need a when you're making a full pro project, go ahead and get all the yarn you need for that particular time. So this is one example of the yarn. Um, I'm not going to use this yarn today because it's a little darker. Uh, I always suggest when you are first starting out a project, try to go with a lighter color and um, that way you can see your stitches. And I also like to use cotton yarn because at the end of the project, whether you like it or not, or if it's messy, it can still be used as a dishcloth or a washcloth. It can still be uh, a versatile project for you. Now to get started with crochet and with our project, oh, let me show you what we are gonna be doing today. Uh, we're gonna be doing um, a series of three stitches today. We're going to learn the single crochet stitch, the half double crochet stitch, and the double crochet stitch. I'm sorry, did I say half double? And then double crochet. As you can see, each stitch is a little taller than the next, so it gives you your row height and it can make projects go quickly. I like to do the half double crochet when you're doing blankets because it doesn't give you very many holes and uh, it works up quickly. So to get started, uh, we're first gonna learn how to do the half double crochet and then we're gonna go to the single crochet and then to the double. So to get started um, in any project that you do, you first need to create a slip knot. You usually want to, uh, or a slip knot is a type of knot that is removable and it's also adjustable. It's a good uh, common magician's knot too. So to make a slip knot, um, there's many ways to do it. Uh, the way I'll show you is you're gonna take some yarn that's about six inches long because you wanna leave a tail and you're going to wrap it around your finger two times. So you have two loops on your finger. You're going to take the one, the outer, outer string, and you're going to pass it over to make an X. Then you're going to take the new outer string and pass it over that yarn, over your finger, and then you're going to pull both strings until it's taut and you've made a loop. And as you can see, this loop is a little larger, but you can just pull and it makes the, the hole shrink. And if you pull it all the way, it'll come undone. 
So let's do that again, just to make sure. We're gonna wrap it around two times. And we're gonna take our outer yarn, we're gonna pass it over to make an X. We're gonna take our new outer yarn, pass it over that yarn, over our finger, grab both tail ends and pull. Then you can adjust by grabbing the two legs and just pulling until you get the right size you want. So now we're gonna put this yarn on our hook and then you can tighten it up. Anytime you tighten a knot or string, make sure you're tightening it on your shaft of your hook. If you do it on your throat, then it'll make for a very tight loop and it'll be harder to go into that stitch the next time around. This is your true diameter needle of that five millimeter size. So this, the type of crochet is made with a series of loops. So we make a lot of loops to create our project. And the first type of loop we're going to make is what is called a chain. We're just going to bring our yarn through our loop. And we do that by grabbing our yarn wrapping it around from the back to the front. And then you're going to pull through the loop. And sometimes it's easier if you turn your hook so it catches your yarn and then you can pull right through. And remember to bring your yarn, the new loop back onto the shaft so that way you have the right size loop. And we're going to do this again. We're going to bring it around and if you want to pinch and then grab with you, grab your, your chain you started and turn your hook down and then pull through the loop. So again, we're going to wrap our yarn around from back to front, turn your hook down, pull through the loop. Wrap our yarn around turn your hook down. And if you notice as I'm pulling my chain down, it's actually opening the stitch a little more. And that way it's easier to pull all the way through. And then remember to bring your new loop back to the large part of your hook. Wrap around, turn your hook down, and pull through the loop. And as you can see, I'm making a series of Vs or chains. And each chain counts as one stitch. The only stitch that does not count is the stitch that is on your hook. The reason why is because it is not a finished stitch. So therefore it's still live. So the only stitches you count are the ones that um, are on the loop or on the chain itself. So right now I have one, two, three, four, five stitches. All right, we're going to do it again. I'm going to go till about 20 stitches. So we're going to wrap it around. Turn our hook down and pull through. Turn down, yarn around. and pull through. And if your needle falls off or if your hook falls off or if you feel like you have a sloppy stitch anywhere, you can easily and gently just pull out the stitches until you feel comfortable with and happy with what you have. Then you just put your hook back on your stitch on the loop and you continue. So around, around, down. If you happen to be a lefty, I'm actually a lefty. It's the same concept. You hold it in your hand and you're always gonna go around from the back to the front and you pull through.
So you're going to do the same thing whether you're left-handed or right-handed. It's always you're wrapping the yarn from the back to the front and pulling through. So we're going to do that a series of times. Okay. For our practice, I have a nice good selection. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I'll just do one more. Fifteen. Okay, actually, I'm actually going to do a total of 16. Um, the first stitch I'm going to be teaching you is the half double crochet. Um, with a half double crochet, you need some height to create that first one. So one stitch is eaten up as the side. And so when, you get, when we get ready to work on our project, we've completed our chain. And now what we're going to do is crochet into each of these loops. And you can crochet in a couple of ways. You can go into the top of loops, or you can also go into the back where there's these little bumps. Um, the only difference is you would have um, the crochet chains at the bottom to give you a nice decorative edge. Um, but for our purpose, we're just gonna go directly in. So for our half double crochet, we're going to go two into the um, third stitch from our hook. So here's our first stitch, here's our second stitch, and here's our third stitch. So before we go in, we need to wrap our yarn around. Then we're going to go into that stitch. And then we're going to draw up a loop. And to draw up a loop is we wrap our yarn again around the hook and you bring it through that, through the chain stitch. So now you have three stitches on your hook. Now we're going to wrap our yarn again. And we're going to go through all three chains. And that's created our edging which is going to be our first leg and then we've also created our first stitch so now after that we're going to go into each and every stitch after that so we're going to wrap our yarn again we're going to wrap it around from back to front we're going to go into the next stitch and push through Then you're going to wrap your yarn and draw up the loop. So you have three stitches on your loop. You're going to wrap your yarn around and then pull through all three stitches. Now you have two stitches on your loop or two stitches on your chain. So again, we're going to wrap, go through the stitch. draw up our loop, then yarn over, and complete the stitch by going through all three. So as you can see now, I have one, two, three stitches, and then I have our edge stitch right here. So now we're going to continue that all the way around. Now, there's different types of ways to hold your yarn. You do whatever feels comfortable for you. Um, I like to actually wrap mine around my pinky, lay it over my fingers, my next two fingers, and then wrap it around my index finger. This I get more control, and then I can use my ring finger and my pinky as a stop, so it gives me just the right amount of yarn to release. Some people will wrap it around just their index finger and can control it that way, or you can just pinch and hold your yarn and wrap it around. 
So I'm not too concerned right now about how you hold your yarn. You do whatever is comfortable for you, just the way you would hold your crochet hook. And the way you hold your yarn will come naturally as you continue to practice. So again, we're going to wrap our yarn. And if you need to, use your index finger um, on your right side to hold that yarn as you get ready to go through. You can also turn your hook and that yarn will also catch under the hook. And you can go through. If any of those stitches are tight, use the pad of your, your finger to push through. That'll give you a little bit of resistance. But once we go into our chain, we're going to draw up a loop. And then remember to put it on the same height as the rest of the stitches, which are on your shaft. So you have three live stitches. You're going to yarn over. And if you pull down, it opens it up a little bit. And then you can pull through all three stitches. Sometimes if it's hard to go through all three at once, you can undo them all, you know, one at a time. So I can do one, two, and then three, if that's comfortable for you. Just remember not to stop in the middle until you've completed. Um, so that way you don't, you won't lose track if you've done a yarn over or you've done a full stitch. So we're gonna yarn over. I think this is where I turn to a lefty, so it's a little twisted. Yarn over, pull through, and yarn over. Go through all three stitches. Okay. So we're just going to do that all the way to the end. Oh, if you need to know if you've actually done a stitch or not, because it does pull, um, if you notice that you have these stitches coming out of this one stitch right here. This leg is in that stitch. So you know the next stitch is gonna be the one right next to it. Drop a loop, go through all three stitches. See how this one pulls? Now I know this will be my next one. Yarn over, go through, drop a loop, yarn over, go through all three stitches. And it's okay if your chain stitch um, feels a little sloppy or a little wonky, it will even out. If you don't like it, now would be the time to uh, rip everything out and start again. So yarn over, go in, through, yarn over. Go through all three stitches. Almost there. And three more stitches. Yarn over, go through. Oops, yarn over, go through. Drop a loop. Yarn over, go through three. Yarn over, yarn over, go through, pull up, yarn over, go through all three. And then my last stitch right here, same thing, yarn over, drop a loop, yarn over, go through all three stitches. So now, I'm going to go ahead and just lift up that stitch a little bit so I don't lose my spot. And I have my first completed row. You see, I have a little bit of a wonky stitch right there, so I may want to pull it back if I wanted to. Uh, but now you can see I've completed a nice straight row. I have the same thing we started off with were these daisy chains. So 
um, we now have the, the daisy, the Vs at the top as well. Um, so those will look nice and even. And to count, again, we don't count our live stitch because that is not a finished stitch. So we're going to count our Vs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then 14 is our last stitch here. And remember, I chained 16, but two of them were eaten up for the side for the height. So that's where we're at right now. So now to start the next row, we'll go ahead and get this back on. As you can see, um, I can't crochet anymore to the left because I'm out of, out, out of stitches. So what we do is we're just going to flip it over like a flag. We don't want to twist it because then you'll be working on the bottom. You just want to take it and then just pass it over left to right or right to the left. That will then give you all these new, new rows of stitches. Now, just like at the beginning, we want to make sure that we create our height. As you can see, this is a pretty tall stitch. If we just started crocheting, we would have a very squished or compact first stitch. So what we need to do is create our height. So we're going to chain two stitches. And by chaining, we just wrap our yarn around. We pull through. Make sure I don't have my tail. You don't want to work with your tail. You're going to run out of yarn really fast and you'll find that out very quickly too. You're going to wrap your yarn around. Bring your hook down if you need to, or not to slip off your hook and pull through. Again, we're going to do that one more time. So we've chained two. Now we've created our row height. For this pattern, um, you can some, some patterns will have you go into the first stitch, which is right here down below. Some will have you go into the next stitch. I'm going to go into this first stitch today. So we're going to wrap our yarn around and we're just going to continue all the way through. So again, wrap our yarn around, drop a loop. And if you notice, um, when I go through our stitches, when you wrap around, you're going to go through the, the hole where the V's are. So I'm not only going to pick up one of these stitches, I'm going to go directly into this hole below the V's. So I'm going to pick up both of those stitches. Then you yarn over and drop a loop. Then you're going to yarn over and complete the stitch by going through all three. So again, yarn over. Go through, drop a loop. Yarn over, go through all three. Yarn over. Go under both of those stitches. Drop a loop. Yarn over, go through all three. And we're going to continue that way. And this row is usually a little easier because you have a little more meat to hold on to. And it won't feel as floppy. Yarn over. And as you can see, I hold my yarn with my index finger just so that way I make sure it won't come undone. You can do that if that feels comfortable for you. And then I like to pull down so that way it opens up those stitches to make that hook go through a little easier. Yarn over, go through all three. Yarn over, draw up a loop. Yarn over, go through all three. Now, as you can see, because there are multiple uh, steps to make a stitch, it does use a little more yarn than crochet. It uses about a third more yarn. And then, of course, the more, the taller the stitches, the more times you have to make a loop. 
Um, so it does use a lot of yarn that way. But usually patterns are very good about telling you how much yarn you would need. If you feel because of the twisting that your wrist is starting to hurt or it's feeling sore, immediately put down your project and, and step away from for it for a minute. Take a rest. Um, a lot of time that's fatigue because of all the twisting that you do with your hand and we don't want you to get hurt doing this project. Um, there are some people that will use um, like a wrist guard or a compression sleeve to help reduce some of that pain um, because we don't want you to have carpal tunnel. So wrap it around, go through. Now here is my last stitch right here. So I make sure I have C the V. Go through, wrap it around, drop a loop, and then go through all three stitches again. So now I lay my project down. I have a nice straight project. And you're going to do that for every row that you're going to always chain to for this half double crochet. You're going to chain across. You're going to get to your last chain stitch or your last stitch on your leg. And sometimes it looks like it's falling off. But if you stop um, a little shorter, then you'll notice that you'll have more of this curve. And then your project will start getting shorter like a triangle. So it's important to count all your stitches after every row. Um, for a few times until you feel comfortable with what you're doing. Um, so then that way you know that you're going to have a nice straight pattern. So the next thing, oh, and also this is where a stitch marker would come in handy. So let's say I wanted to stop. You can put your locking stitch marker on. And if you lock it, then you can step away from your project at any time. And you can do this in the middle of a project. You don't have to do it right at the end. But if you can see, I can pull my yarn tight and my stitch isn't going anywhere. Um, so it's really um, a nice handy tool that you can have to hold your place. Of course, if you don't have a stitch marker, you can easily um, use a piece of thread. You can just tie around um, or just make a really large loop. And that'll give it some time that it would pull that you wouldn't have to, to worry about it falling off in, very quickly. So now I want to show you the, so this was our double crochet stitch. And then here's just all of it in all of its glory. And you can just go until you get all the way to the end. Uh, the next stitch I'm gonna show you is the single crochet stitch. So this is just a one stitch height. Um, it's great if you ever wanted to like cross stitch or do any kind of embroidery. It's more of a square type um, shape. And so I'm just going to show you by continuing it on our project here. So I'm just going to pull my yarn through. Um, and there's different ways you can chain at the beginning. You can chain at the end of your project this way, and then you can turn. your project, or you can turn your project and then chain. It really doesn't matter. Um, there won't be too much of a difference. But with a single crochet, we only need to chain one stitch to get our height because it's a much shorter stitch. And with this, we're gonna go into our first chain as well, um, or the first stitch as well. Now, because we don't need our height, we don't need to yarn over like we did with our half double crochet. So. After we chain, we're just going to go immediately into our stitch, wrap our yarn over, and draw up a loop. And we're only going to have two stitches. Now we're going to wrap our yarn around, and we're going to go through those two, two stitches. So that is our first single crochet. So we're going to do a single crochet all the way through. So again, no need to yarn over. We're just going to go through the stitch, drop a loop. And you do this with a lot of basic stitches. Um, then you're going to yarn over and then go through both stitches. 
The reason why we draw up a loop and we don't continue our pattern is because this, we need to create a new row. And if we automatically treat our loop as our stitch, we're not bringing up our height, so it's going to compress. So what we need to do is draw up a loop to bring our new row and to create our new height. So after we create two stitches, we're going to yarn over and go through both of those stitches. You still get the same Vs on the top. It's the same technique. But as you can see, those stitches look a lot smaller and a lot shorter than our half double crochet. This just means that if you were working a blanket, uh, you would have to work it for a lot longer. But it's a nice project, especially if you're doing fingerless mitts or hat. Um, it gives you a little more warmth and closeness and tighter stitches. So yarn over, go through two. There's our single crochet. Yarn over, go through two. So draw up a loop and pull through. Then yarn over and go through both of those stitches. If you ever need to pull out one of your stitches because you didn't like them, like if you didn't do it correctly, all you have to do is just take your loop off of your hook and then just gently pull. And then as you can see, I have a loop right here. I can just add my hook right back on and then continue my pattern. Using a single crochet stitch, it's easier to see where your next stitch goes. Remember, we're crocheting in under the two stitches. I know I just did this one because you can see that there's a lot more yarn in this one hole and there's no yarn in this hole. So we're going to draw up a loop, yarn over, and go through both of those stitches. And as you can see, too, as I'm progressing um, on my rows, the rows are a little cleaner and a little easier to see. You'll also know as you, uh, you'll find as you get more consistent with your practice, your stitches will be more uniform and they'll be easier to see. Yarn over, go through two. Whoops, I didn't go through two. So I just need to complete that stitch by going one more time. Go through the loop, draw up a loop, yarn over, and go through two. When you start to get your feel of how you want to hold your yarn, you'll notice that one hand is in charge of, whoopsie, I did a yarn over, so I need to undo the stitch. You'll notice that one hand is in charge of your yarn, while your right hand is in charge of your hook. Um, so it can help you go a little faster. So if you just use your hook for grabbing, and your left hand for holding your yarn, um, both hands do less work. As you can see, I only grabbed one of my stitches, so I need to pull this out. Sometimes you may have to just look at the top view to make sure you're going under both stitches. There are different ways you can if you wanted to, to only grab one stitch, either your back leg or your left, your left, your back stitch or your left, your front stitch. Your back stitch is always the one behind you. The front stitch is the one in front of you. If you do that repeatedly, you can create ribbing. So now what we're going to do is we're at our last stitch. There's my final V. Go through. Yarn over, draw the loop. Yarn over, go through two. So now, if you lay it out, you can see I have a row of single crochet stitches. You do the same thing, you would just chain one and then you would turn and you would go all the way to the end and pick up. But now what I want to do is I want to show you our double crochet. 
Our double crochet is a lot taller of a stitch. It's twice as tall as the single crochet. The half double is um, just about three quarters of the height. Double crochet, as you can see, it's a little looser. Um, it has more holes. Um, great for decorative scarves. Um, you could do it with blankets as well. There's not that, it's not that big of a hole where it'd be that big of an issue. Um, but it's great for making tall stitches and getting the job done quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn. And like the half double, we're going to chain twice because we need our height for the double crochet. So we're gonna yarn over again, yarn over, go through again. So now I have two. So the, the double crochet is very similar to the half double crochet, but there's just one more step to it. So like the half double, we do a yarn over. We're gonna go into our stitch and draw up a loop. So we're going to have three stitches on our hook. Now where the half double is where we yarn over and go through all three stitches, we're gonna, we're going to go through them um, with more steps. So we're gonna yarn over and go through the first stitch only. Oh, I'm sorry, we're gonna go over through um, two stitches. So you yarn over, go through two stitches. Now I have two stitches remaining. And then you're gonna yarn over and go through the last two stitches. And that's what's going to create a nice tall stitch. So again, we're going to yarn over. We're going to go through the top two, draw up a loop. And then we're going to yarn over and reduce our three stitches down to two by going through two of those stitches. Now we're gonna yarn over and complete our stitch by going through the last two stitches. So you can see I have a nice tall, tall um, leg for a stitch. And we're gonna do it again. Yarn over, go through the stitch, or go through the V. Drop a loop, yarn over, go through two stitches, yarn over, go through two stitches. So again, gonna yarn over. And sometimes if you pull it apart, you don't know which stitch, you would think this would go to it, but if you straighten it back up, you can see, oh, I have a stitch in that hole right there, so I need to go into the next one. Yarn over, draw up a loop. I have two. Yarn over, pull through two, the remaining two. So you yarn over, you go into the stitch, draw up a loop. I have three stitches, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through the remaining two. And we're going to continue that all the way to the end. Now learning these three different stitches, um, you can play with them in different ways. You can, if you wanted to make just um, a sampler, you can change every row if you wanted to do a single, a half double, and a double crochet. Or if you wanted to do a single and, you know, three doubles and then another single, you can really play with the pattern and create a fun texture. If you just wanted to do only one stitch at a time, you can um, do that and get that practice until you really know those stitches and feel comfortable. These three stitches are the main stitches in crochet. Of course, there's many others, um, but these are the ones that are most common. Um, the stitch terms, if you see ever see in a pattern for a single crochet is SC for single crochet. Half double crochet is HDC. 
and then double crochet is DC. Um, so anytime you see that, then that way you'll know. But you can also play with these same uh, variety of stitches on the same row as well. Just remember um, your height does change with the stitch. So just to keep your pattern symmetrical um, so it won't end too um, off kilter, on the back, on the next row, you may want to put where a single crochet stitch was, you may want to do a double crochet so you have that even height. Um, if you had a double crochet, you may want to put a single crochet in that next stitch. So that way um, your height is evenly divided between those two rows. Okay, I'm getting close. I have three more stitches. So yarn over, go through, drop a loop, yarn over, go through two, drop a loop, yarn over, there's my stitch. Sometimes you just kind of have to fight it. There it goes. Drop a loop, go through two, go through two. Okay, I'm just going to pull that out so you can kind of see. Um, the sides look a little round just because I haven't completed. When I would crochet my next round, as you can see when I crochet, it'll make it stand up. So don't worry if on that top row it looks a little rounded, it will clean up on the end. So there we go. We've learned a couple of different, uh, we've learned three stitches. We've learned Oh, we've learned how to chain. We've learned how to do a half double crochet. We've learned how to do a single crochet. And we've also learned how to do a double crochet. When we're done with our project, let's say we're complete, I would go ahead and take my scissors, leaving about a six inch tail. And then what you're gonna do is wrap your yarn around one more time, loop through, bring it through and pull. That way you have a nice finished edge and then you can take your darning needle and weep in your ends. So those are the basic stitches that you're going to deal with. Um, I wanted to go ahead and show you uh, some resources um, that should be included in your pack that you have. Uh, when you picked it up at the library. Um, if not, feel free to uh, get with the library and they'll be happy to send this to you. Uh, so the first uh, page is talking about yarn weight. So when we went over the yarn ball van, um, it showed you the different types of sizes. It also, um, this resource page will show you um, some common names for the, uh, for the yarn. So like I mentioned, it was a worsted weight yarn. If you ever hear of a DK, or light worsted, that would actually be a smaller size. Um, you find a lot of these more in the baby blankets. Um, but then it'll also tell you your recommended um, needle size. This is for knitting. The hook size is for crochet. It will tell you wraps per inch, and that's just wrapping the yarn around your hook. Um, and it also gives you the average amount of yarn that you'll find in these balls. And then some common uses for these size. So if you're wanting to do um, a sweater, you may want to look at um, like a three or a four if you want a really big blanket or really big sweater that'll beef it up. Um, you know, definitely look in the fives and sixes. Um, also included on this is our crochet terminology. So here's a couple of visuals um, to remind you about how your stitches go through your uh, or the, how the hook goes through the stitches. Also here are the abbreviations that you may see. So if you ever look in a pattern and they have abbreviations, these are the common terms that you'll see. Um, in any pattern, if there is a complicated stitch, it will give you the instructions how to do so. 
There are also two different types of terminology. One is our US stitching and also there's um, UK stitching and they do vary slightly. So what their double crochet is, is comparative to what our single crochet is. So just make sure if you are looking at patterns, you're looking at um, US terminologies um, to avoid any confusion. Um, here's some basic online tutorials and some resources. First of all, you can find a lot of patterns and instructions, some great videos on the yarn uh, company websites. Lion Brand is very common, and also the ones that are tied to Bernat, Karen, Red Heart, Patton's, uh, Coates and Clark, which is a cotton yarn, Sugar and Cream, which is a, a cotton yarn. They have a website called Yarn Inspirations. They're all under uh, one umbrella house. They have good videos. They have lots and lots of free patterns. So uh, those were great resources to look, and they are they do lean towards the beginner, beginner and intermediate. Uh, side so you can find a lot of patterns that'll get you started right from the beginning. The crochet crowd, uh, he's Canadian so he's he's really funny to listen to and he's really great with his instructions. Here's his website and you can also go on to YouTube. There's lots of great uh, video options there. Daisy Farm Crafts, she makes a lot of sweet simple baby blankets that are free and regular blankets as well. And she'll change up her color, she'll change up her stitching. So check her out for some uh, good basic stitching uh, creative ideas. And then also don't forget the library. The library has tons of books and, um, and different types of materials online. Uh, if you were at the library, you can even check out crochet hooks now. Uh, which is great, so you don't have to buy them. You can uh, hold them on for hold on to them for a couple of weeks. They have um, uh, some magazines on RD Digital, and uh, on Overdrive, there's a few crochet books as well and knitting books um, also, as far as tutorials. Um, In-person resources, Rolling Hills Library. Again, I can't stress them enough. They have a, a great selection. Savannah Branch has a lot of resources, but they can definitely send them down to the belt branch for you. So you don't have to go up there if you don't want. And then there is a craft group that meets here in St. Joe. We would meet at the mall every Monday night um, in the food court. And then once a month at the library where we would bring food and have fun and play show and tell. Right now, because of COVID, we're doing it via Zoom. And you can find all of our Zoom information um, to meet if you would like to is at Craft and Chat St. Joe on our Facebook page. So now that we've actually have created our square, what can we do with it? So I wanted to give you a few ideas of what you can do with just a good old fashioned square. The first thing is display your swatches. You worked hard to get to where you are. You might as well show it off and be proud of it. So you can put some fun little designs around it, mount it to a board, put it in a picture frame. Um, be proud of what you did. You can turn them into blankets. You can make, um, on the right, there is what's called a, a log cabin where you start off with a square and then you pick up along the sides and you work in a spiral and you can go as big as you want. Um, you can change your colors after every single um, strip or round um, so you can really make it fun. You can also just work in colors. So work the exact same pattern all the way through. Uh, just change your colors as you go along. You can work from the center out. The top pink one is called a granny square. Um, these and, and also the one on the right on the left in the rainbow is a granny square as well. As you can see, one only did about four rows before they bound off and joined, and the one in the upper center it was just one big granny square, and they worked it until they finished it. You can also make bags with it. The bottom right is uh, it's a basic rectangle. This, these are, this is a knitted example, but you can do it with crochet. You just turn it into a rectangle. You make a, a couple of holes, one on each side for the handles, and then you fold it in half and seam up the side. Uh, so you can make really cute bags with it. This you can turn a square and then fold three of them and sew up the seams. 
and make a little pocket, great for like little stocking stuffers or little presents that you wanna to give to your friends. You can make baskets, you can make bags, you can make scarves by doing samplers. We've learned three stitches. You can just keep going if you wanted to and every new stitch you add, you can add a new technique after every item and at the end you have your very own sampler, sampler scarf of your projects you've made. Um, here's another granny square scarf. Um, up at the top, same thing, just make it as, uh, as a big scarf, make it longer as you need to. You can join the ends together to make a cowl. You can make a, an infinity cowl by just doing a half twist and seaming. You can also do a lot of accessories right now because we're wearing masks. You can uh, make our mask extensions, which is just a basic uh, rectangle or an oval, Could throw a couple buttons on it, and then you can use that. You can do necklaces, belts, our uh, fingerless mitts are is just a basic square and when you fold it in half, you seam it up about three or four inches from the bottom, you seam it uh, about an inch from the top and you have that big hole in the middle for your thumb and that's all you have to do. It's They're super, super simple to make and also cute little earrings. When you use that really fine, delicate yarn, you can work those nice intricate details. For hats, this the hat the baby is wearing is essentially the same thing as the bag. It's just turned upside down. You make a rectangle, you sew up the seams, and add a cute little pom pom on each end. You can make headbands and socks, and you can also do ponchos. A lot of these are just seamed, how it's um, a big rectangle, and you just seam it along one of the sides. And then you can also do decorative items. You can make placemats, you can do bunting. This they ended up using on the far left. You can do your swatch, you can frame, and then just hook your jewelry to it and make it a, a really cute decorative jewelry holder. You can also do Christmas ornaments as well. And then just for fun, you can make bookmarks, you can do uh, baby clothes, you can do baby toys, you can do dog toys, you can make games out of it. The yarn that's wrapped around the mailbox is called yarn bombing, where you make little swatches and little pieces of fabric and you tie them to trees or different places. So kind of the uh, eco-friendly graffiti art. Anyway, that is all I have to show. I hope this has given you a lot of inspiration for your project where you'll be able to continue doing this. Uh, I hope you are able to join us for our next crochet class. It is going to be November 19th. Um, we're going to do Crochet 201, where we're going to learn to make these really cute nesting bowl baskets. Um, I have three different ones. And they have different edgings, as you can see. Um, so we're going to learn that. We're going to learn how to crochet in the round. And uh, it'll be a lot of fun. I hope you can join us for that. Also, if you uh, enjoy knitting or you would like to uh, learn to advance your skills in knitting, this is our cro uh, Knitting 201 class, which is going to be November 10th. And we're going to learn how to do a basket weave. We learned on our first one how to do our knit stitch. Uh, for our next class, we're going to learn how to do our purl stitch. So if you want to catch up so you can be ready for our 201 class, feel free to contact the library and they'll be happy to let you know. Once again, on behalf of Rolling Hills Library, thank you so much for joining us today. And I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact Rolling Hills and they'll be able to provide you with some resources and other information for our upcoming classes. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.